Lecture 2. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Augustine, as the Magi seek a redeemer, so Herod fears a successor. Gloss. The king he is called, though in comparison with him whom they are seeking, he is an alien and a foreigner. Pseudo Christostom. Herod was troubled when he heard that a king was born in, of Jewish lineage, lest himself being an Idumean, the, king, the kingdom should return again to native princes and himself be expelled and his seed after him. Great station is ever obnoxious to great fears, as he, the boughs of trees planted in high ground move when never so little wind blows. So high men are troubled with little rumors, while the lowly, like trees in the valley, remain at peace. Augustine If his birth as an infant makes proud kings tremble, what will his tribunal as a judge do? Let princes fear him sitting at the right hand of his father, whom this impious king feared while he hanged yet on his mother's breast. Leo Thou art troubled, Herod, without cause. Thy nature cannot contain Christ, nor is the Lord of the world content with the narrow bounds of thy dominion. He whom thou wouldest not should reign in Judea reigns everywhere. Gloss. Perhaps he was troubled not on his own account, but for fear of the displeasure of the Romans. They would not allow the title of king or of God to any without their permission. Gregory, at the birth of a king of heaven, a king of earth is troubled. Surely great er, earthly greatness is confounded when heavenly greatness shows itself. Leo, Herod represents the devil, who as he then instigated him, so now he unweariedly in, in, imitates him. For he is grieved by the calling of the Gentiles and by the daily ruin of his power. Pseudo Christosom. Both have their own causes of jealousy, both fear a successor in their kingdom, Herod an earthly successor, the devil a spiritual. Even Jerusalem is troubled, which should have rejoiced at that news when a Jewish king was said to be risen up. But they were troubled, for the wicked cannot rejoice at the coming of the good, or perhaps it was in fear that Herod should wreak his wrath. Uh, against a Jewish king on his race. Gloss. Jerusalem was troubled with him, as willing to favor him whom it feared. The vulgar always pay undue honor to one who tyrannizes over it. Observe the diligence of his inquiry. If he should find him, he would do him he would do to him as he showed afterwards his disposition. If he should not, he would have at least excused the Romans. Remigius, they are called scribes, not from the employment of writing, but from the interpretation of the scriptures, for they were doctors of the law. Observe, he does not inquire where Christ is born, but where he should be born. The subtle purpose of this was to see if they would show pleasure at the birth of their king. He calls him Christ, because he knew that the king of the Jews was anointed. Pseudo Christosom. Why does Herod make this inquiry, seeing he believed not the scriptures? Or if he did believe, how could he hope to be able to kill him whom the scriptures declared should be king? The devil instigated Herod, who believed that scripture lies not. Such is the faith of devils who are not permitted to have perfect belief, even of that which they do believe. That they do believe, it is the force of truth constrains them. That they do not believe, it is that they are blinded by the enemy. If they had perfect faith, they would live as about to depart from this world soon, not as to possess it forever. Leo, the Magi, judging as men, sought in the royal city for him, whom they had been told was born a king, but he who took the form of a servant and came not to judge, but to be judged, chose Bethlehem for his birth, Jerusalem for his death. Theodotus, 
Had he chosen the mighty city of Rome, it might have been thought that this change of the world had been wrought by the might of their citizens. Had he been the son of the emperor, his power might have aided him. But what was his choice? All that was mean, all that was in low esteem, that in this, this transformation of the world, divinity might at once be recognized. Therefore he chose a poor woman for his mother, a poor country for his native country. He has no money, and this stable is his cradle. Gregory? Rightly is he born in Bethlehem, which signifies the house of bread, who said, I am the living bread, who came down from heaven. Pseudo Christosom, when they should have kept the secret, mis kept secret the mystery of the king appointed of God, especially before a foreign king, straightway they became not preachers of the word of God, but revealers of his mystery. And they not only display the mystery, but cite the passage of the prophet Micah. Gloss, he quotes this prophecy as they quote who give the sense and not the words. Jerome. The Jews are here blamed for ignorance, for whereas the prophecy says, Thou Bethlehem Ephratah, they said Bethlehem in the land of Judah, pseudo Christosom. By cutting short the prophecy, they became the cause of the murder of the innocents, for the prophecy proceeds, From thee shall go forth a king who shall feed my people Israel, and his day shall be from everlasting. Had they cited the whole prophecy, Herod would not have raged so madly, considering that it could not be an earthly king whose days were spoken of as from everlasting. Jerome, the following is the sense of the prophecy, Thou Bethlehem of the land of Judah, or Ephrata, which is added to distinguish it from another Bethlehem in Galilee. Though thou art a small village among the thousand cities of Judah, yet out of thee shall be born Christ, who shall be the ruler of Israel, who according to the flesh is of the seed of David, but was born of me before the worlds. And therefore it is written, His going forth are of old, in the beginning was the word. Gloss this latter half of the prophecy the Jews dropped, and other parts they altered, either through ignorance, as was said above, or for perspicuity, that Herod, who was a foreigner, might better understand the prophecy, thus for Aphrata. They said, Land of Judah, and for little among the thousands of Judah, which expresses its smallness contrasted with the multitude of the people, they said, not the least among the princes, willing to show the high dignity that would come from the birth of the prince, as if they had said, Thou art great among cities, from which princes have come. Remigius, or the senses, though little among cities that have dominion, yet art thou not the least, for out of thee shall come the ruler who shall rule my people Israel. This ruler is Christ who rules and guides his faithful people. Christostom, observe the exactness of the prophecy. It is not he It is not he shall be in Bethlehem, but shall come out of Bethlehem, showing that he should be only born there. What reason is there for applying this to Zerubbabel, as some do? For, this, for his goings forth were not from everlasting, nor did he go forth from Bethlehem, but was born in Babylonia. The expression, art not the least, is a further proof, for none but Christ could make the town where he was born illustrious. And after that birth there came men from the utmost ends of the earth to see the stable and manger. He calls him not the Son of God, but the ruler who shall govern my people Israel, for thus he ought to condescend at the first, that they should not be scandalized, but should preach such things as more pertain to salvation, that they might be gained. Who shall rule my people Israel is said mystically for those of the Jews who believed. For if Christ ruled not all the Jews, theirs is the blame. Meanwhile, he is silent, respecting the Gentiles, that the Jews might not be scandalized. Mark this wonderful ordinance. Jews and Magi mutually instruct each other. The Jews learned of the Magi that a star had proclaimed Christ in the East. The Magi from the Jews that the prophets had spoken of him of old. 
Thus confirmed by a twofold testimony, they would look with more ardent faith for one whom the brightness of the star and the voice of the prophets equally proclaimed. Augustine, the star that guided the Magi to the spot where the infant God was w with his virgin mother, might have concluded them straight to the town, but it vanished and showed not itself again to them till the Jews themselves had told them the place where Christ should be born. Bethlehem of Judea likened this to those who built the ark for Noah, providing others with a refuge. Themselves perished in the flood or like to the stones by the road that show the miles, but themselves are not able to move. The inquirers heard and departed, the teachers spake and remained still, even now the Jews show us something similar. For some pagans, when clear passages of scripture are shown them, which prophesy of Christ, suspecting them to be forged by the Christians, have recourse to Jewish copies. Thus they leave the Jews to read unprofitably, but to go and to go on themselves to believe faithfully.